Welcome to the Power Foods Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Jo, mind and body strategist, fitness nutrition specialist, and weight loss specialist. You're listening to episode number 238, 10 Simple Steps to Trim Up for a Wedding. I'm passionate about helping you learn how to become a strategist of your own health and body using science-backed evidence, anecdotal principles proven effective in my coaching, and psychological awareness. Visit me on Instagram at Power Foods Lifestyle, and be sure to join our Facebook group called Power Foods Lifestyle Champion. If you're interested in my one-on-one coaching services, I only have two spots left for the first part of February, so be sure to email me at powerfoodslifestyle at gmail.com. And if you respond with the subject line podcast, I will actually take 15% off coaching for the full duration of February. So be sure to reach out if you're interested in that. Okay, PFL champs, let's now move into today's discussion. It's so often that somebody reaches out and wants to be coached because they are preparing for a wedding, whether it is their own wedding or their daughter's wedding, their son's wedding, cousin's wedding, friend's wedding, you name it. There were a bunch of you who joined me in preparing for my own wedding in the bride body challenge of, uh, we did that in October through November of 2018. That was such a great time. I really love that group. I felt my absolute best. I felt stunning on my wedding day. And it was so wonderful to feel that way. And so many of us want to feel that way. And, and feeling stunning looks different for all of us. And it's a feeling, right? And so we each deserve to feel that way from the inside out. And whatever it takes for you to feel that, I want to support you in getting you to that goal. For some of you, it may be losing five pounds. Maybe it is 50 pounds. It's whatever helps you feel your best and you're confident. And I want you to make sure you don't let the world tell you what your best is. You define it on your own and then let's strategize our way together. And that's how we become the strategists of our own health. We don't cater to what other people expect of us. We decide what we want. So with that said, I'm going to go through 10 simple steps today. These are primarily nutrition focused as this is primarily a nutrition podcast. However, the final two tips today are going to be non-nutrition focused. So get out your pen, get out a paper, take some notes. I'm going to move through a lot of this and share some thoughts rather quickly. Number one, have eggs for breakfast. Eggs in the Power Foods Lifestyle are a PF, a protein fat. You have to have two large eggs for that to qualify as the peak ranges. Peak range of protein is 15 to 30 grams of protein and a peak range of fat is 8 to 12 grams of fat. So you will achieve that by eating two eggs. I would recommend you not cook it in that much oil. If you're going to use an avocado or coconut oil or an olive oil, only use one teaspoon or you can use the calorie-free spray just lightly just to keep it from sticking to the pan. Definitely want you to throw in a V, a veggie to that meal. So consider some spinach, some chopped up kale. Um, you might even go outside the box and you might have some cucumber chopped up on the side. You might want to dice up some red or yellow or green bell pepper and saute that in. Now you have to be careful because you're not using a lot of oil and you will be tempted to use a lot of oil to make sure that your vegetables are nice and sauteed. So you just have to kind of either A, stir frequently and so it might not cook all the way through it might just be a little bit darker around the edges that's for you to decide or you might consider steaming some vegetables maybe you have some leftover vegetables from the night before dinner i love steamed vegetables that's actually the type of vegetables i grew up eating it was literally every night to pull out the big metal pan put the the cauliflower the broccoli the carrots maybe some onions that was pretty much oh we had zucchini and summer squash sliced up and then pull out the steamer basket put an inch or two of water in the bottom turn that on high and let it boil so it steams and then you cover it with the lid and do that for about 15 minutes or so and voila there's your vegetables so that's a great way you could just eat that on the side of your eggs be sure to use sea salt with those eggs the key about having protein and fat for breakfast is that it helps stabilize your blood sugar gets a lot of nutrients to your brain and um, it's going to help you feel better it's going to help you feel full it's not going to start the blood sugar train that's one of the things we don't want to do too often now i'm not saying eating carbs in the bat in the morning is bad i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying a strategy that is that may be helpful that you might want to play around with is having two eggs for breakfast please do not stress about the cholesterol in eggs 
As we've discussed in many of my courses and previous podcasts, I recommend no more than three yolks per day. But even for those with high cholesterol, the issue actually lies in other foods, combinations, and just many other factors. And I actually do a lot of coaching calls around high cholesterol. So be sure to DM me if you want to take advantage of my, my coaching in February. So number two is have a planned afternoon snack. Uh, just this morning on a coaching call with a client, we have determined that having a non-negotiable afternoon snack is really a benefit for this individual. When you don't have to think too much, you don't absorb too much glucose of the brain, thinking, 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 especially as women, like we are constantly going, we are constantly worrying about other people, where we've got to go, work, career, family, you name it, exerting any additional thought. Like if you have to sit there and think about every single meal, you're just setting yourself up for trouble. So if you're not committed to following the same plan for a full week, which is my typical recommendation for those serious about changing their body composition, then at least have a few non-negotiable planned afternoon snacks. So that should entail a protein veggie carb, a protein veggie fat, or a protein veggie fat carb. So I'll give you an example. I just, before jumping on here to record, had my afternoon snack. It is a half cup of cottage cheese, 2%. That's the P, that's the protein. V, I had five baby carrots, that's my veggie. And I had a fat, I had half a cup of black olives, the kind that come in the can. Just drain it and boom, there you go. So that was a PVF. If I wanted to make that a PVC, I would nix the olives and instead maybe I would dice up a small gala apple, a PVC, protein veggie carb. Now if I wanted a PVCF, I could have all of those together. I probably wouldn't want to eat olives and apple in the same cottage cheese mix, so maybe I would have the apple slices on the side. Number three, define your eating windows and timing. As you know, if you've been a podcast listener for quite some time with me, there are so many ways to eat at mealtime. There is no better way than another. It really comes down to what is right for you and your lifestyle and your sustainability. We could find scientific reasons to support the benefits of any eating style, whether it's three square meals a day, whether it's intermittent fasting, whether it's six small meals per day, whatever it be, I could find those pros in the scientific literature. You're just cherry picking data, right? That's all people are doing when they're marketing to you a certain eating eating strategy. So your job is to figure out which one of those is best for you. Are you the type of person that you generally don't like to eat breakfast, you're too busy for breakfast, and you don't really think about food till noon? Well, then maybe intermittent fasting is for you. And in that case, my very first tip, the eggs for breakfast, move that later in the day. Maybe that's a non-negotiable snack. Maybe that's a part of your lunch. You need to still eat the same number of calories and macros in a day of intermittent fasting as you would if you were eating small frequent meals all day. Okay, you've got to have the same daily macros and calories. That's where most intermittent fasting people actually turned into binge eaters because they don't have a strategy. They don't have rhyme or reason to their eating. They're just eating within an eating window. And while on many accounts, things can improve, and I'm not negating the fact that many people's lives have been blessed by that, I'm a strategist. And I want to get you to the hard and fast data so that you can make wiser decisions, smarter decisions that aren't just about changing your body composition, but actually improve your health, lower your cholesterol, set you up for better brain function, longevity, help your blood sugar remain stable, help you to get the nourishment you need to prevent disease and illness. And, and I mean, that's, that's a big claim, I know. But wouldn't you believe that actually eating in appropriate ways would cellu on the cellular level set you up better? I want to choose to believe that. We know how much in scientific literature is, is proven that placebo effect is a huge deal. So if I'm going to eat in such a way that I believe I am preventing disease, I darn well am going to jump on the bandwagon of believing that that is helping to prevent disease. Heck yeah, I'm going to use placebo all you want when it comes to preventing disease. So that's an option there. I know I'm talking super fast. I'm trying to get through these points. I could give you an hour lecture on every single one, but I want to give you hard and fast actionable information. So define your eating windows and timing. Currently, I personally am doing a six smaller meals per day. So I have alarms, six physical alarms that go off in my phone because otherwise with my newborn, I forget to eat. That's never happened to me in this entire history of the Powerful Lifestyle podcast and teaching these items and writing my books. That's never happened to me before until I had a baby. And all of a sudden, time is very, uh, how do I even say it? It's very elusive and it's very moldable. Like it just doesn't pass the same way. And those of you who've had newborns, I'm sure you're just nodding your heads being like, glad you finally get it. <laughs> 
So anyway, I have to have those alarms go off to remind me to eat. Otherwise, I would probably get to the end of the day and be like, oh my gosh, I'm starving and just eat everything in sight and then feel bad about it. And then the next day be so full from my overeating that I did the same thing again. How many of you guys have experienced that? Okay, number four, come up with a three better option snacks. Now here's the key. You have to write these down. Define them exactly what they are. Put them on a three by five card. And can you repeat what my favorite places to put reminders are? Do you know them? Have you been around here well? All right, here we go. Your fridge, the dashboard of your car, and your bathroom mirror. And I've recently added a fourth one, which is on the monitor of your computer. When you see these reminders, you get them in front of yourself over and over and over and over. They remind you, they program you, they bring you to the prefrontal cortex, that, that stage of your mind, what it is you need to be doing. And so when you are faced with temptation um, of foods that are not bad, remember foods don't have morals, but they will not help you reach your goals. That's what we call a non-strategic food. If it doesn't fall in your strategy of shifting your body composition or building your health, it's a non-strategic food, not a bad food. There's a time and a place to eat those foods. But when you're serious about making change, let's choose strategic foods. Have I beat on that enough? Okay. So when you are faced with the temptation of something non-strategic that's going to stall you on your plan, if not derail you entirely, you have in the front of your mind what your better option snacks are. Here's some ideas. A few squares of dark chocolate. Guys, Dove is not dark chocolate. Okay, look it up. Do a good Google search. Look at what dark chocolate ratings are. You need to be eating at least 80% dark chocolate for me personally to qualify as a dark chocolate. Another better option snack. I know you this is going to kind of blow your mind, guys, but those 100 calorie kettle corn packs are actually brilliant, especially if you have it with a protein shake while you're watching Netflix at night or something. And you know that time of day where you just want to relax and just unwind and have nothing on your mind. And that is actually a great option. Another thing you can do if you want a little, if you have room in your macros and your calories for this, a really delicious way to end the day could be a chocolate protein powder mixed with uh, some unsweetened almond milk, some ice, about a third of a banana. Yes, it's okay to have carbs at night if it's small and it's and it's contained. And again, I'm going to avoid the hour lecture to explain every possible nuance because I don't want anyone to be in the dark and think, oh, that doesn't apply to me. No, I promise it can. I just don't have time to go into every possible situation and demographic. But we absolutely can do that in personalized coaching. You've got and then a tablespoon of peanut butter and then maybe just uh, just a little bit of some whipped cream on top. Yep, the, the kind that comes in the can. Okay, non-strategic food used strategically to help keep you on your plan in a sustainable fashion is fantastic. So blend that all up, put your whipped cream on top, have your little peanut butter chunky monkey shake. You've got the protein in there. You're good to go. You've avoided eating something that will derail you from your plan. And when you feel good and you meet those cravings, you wake up the next day saying, hey, another day. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. Let's do another one. There's nothing that can like replace that feeling of confidence that comes when you have nailed a day. I don't know about you, but I, when I'm going hardcore, I like wake up the next morning. I'm like, is today like another day of momentum or am I like starting from scratch again? And there is such a feeling of confidence and psychologically, that's probably not the best way to go. But when we're like really serious about making some body composition changes that can help keep the momentum going. Different podcast for another time when you didn't make the right choice and we need to clean up the, that action psychologically, emotionally, physically. But right now we're assuming you're going full bore ahead. Can okay, I going to hit those goals? Okay. If you are new here to the Power Foods Lifestyle podcast, first of all, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here and learning. Second of all, I have my recipe books, which is a digital download PDF, volumes one, two, and three, which I would love for you to get. These are available by clicking the link in the show notes. Each volume has over 50 recipes of breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and shakes. And they're gonna give you lots more ideas on how to combine PVCs, PVFs, and PVCFs, as well as a few just other delicious little treats. So I encourage you, if you do not have these already, go grab them. You won't find recipes like this at the rate I am offering them for. So again, just click on the link in your show notes and I'll take you straight to where you can digitally download those recipe books. So number five, drink 70 ounces plus of water per day, cut the soda. 
So when I say cut the soda, I'm meaning any full sugar beverages, anything like that. Basically anything over five to 10 grams of sugar. You look at the nutrition labels. That is a problem for the blood sugar and the fat burning zone. Now comes into a tricky conversation, which is about diet soda. I'm not a fan of anything that we rely on just on principle. And there's a lot of debate right now about exactly what these artificial sweeteners are doing in our bodies. And the reality, my friends, is that while there are so many hypotheses and there are so many correlations that have been found between maybe some mental health issues or gut dysfunction, memory loss, and so forth, or even uh, enhanced cravings like sugar cravings linked to sucralose or aspartame or so many of these other sweeteners, the fact is like they're not they haven't been proven to be bad entirely you know what i mean like completely linked to that so we want to be careful about absolutes and instead ask ourselves a question very important question is having this diet soda i'm a coke zero fan let's get that straight i absolutely hate the taste of diet coke <laughs> and that's what the majority of i feel women are that's their that's their saving grace, right? They're just like, gotta have my Diet Coke and I'm good for the day. Well, I, you know, Coke Zero was kind of my boon for like postpartum for a little bit till I could get my handle on things. And I haven't had it since, uh, since, uh, my baby was about 10 weeks old. So I feel good about that. I'm not going to say, I, I'm not going to lie to you and say, I don't think about it a lot and kind of want to have it, but I feel like I've kind of kicked the need for that on a psychological level because my body certainly didn't need it. It was psychology. Uh, anyway, so that's the question. Is this having this little bit, and I would say no more than 12 ounces in a day, just get a small can, is having this going to help me sustain my plan? Can I achieve perfection in the rest of my plan if I have this? The diet soda is not to prevent you from like eating the appropriate amounts you should. You should never use it as a fuel, like sustainability thing. No, you should eat your regular meals at the right intervals. But if it's more of that like reward or that, oh, something to look forward to. It's been a long day. I need to unwind or I need to stay awake in this meeting or something to that nature. And it's helping you stay sustainable on your plan so you can get results. Then I'm going to give you a green light on that. Of course, this is very nuanced and individualized decisions that you have to make. And I would love to coach you through that, but think through those, those options because it's not a hard and fast yes or no, because if diet soda is the greatest evil we can do, and we believe that we're making this tragic sin in our lives because of that, I'm going to say absolutely not. I could point out and vilify so many other nutrition behaviors that are far probably worse for us on a health level, cardiovascular level, et cetera, than a diet soda. So again, 12 ounces, drinking 70 ounces of water per day. Um, many people, if you're active, you need to get up towards of a hundred ounces per day. Um, unlike my book, edition two says, which was published in 2015, five years ago, I have since recalled what I said in the book about drinking a gallon of water per day. That's assuming you're super active, like religious at the gym every day, pretty active. You're going on a walk every day out and playing with your kids, then a gallon of water probably suited to you. But if you're a little bit above the prime of your life in age, if you are somebody that really isn't getting out and doing much exercise and you're kind of solely relying on your nutrition, then maybe stick to 70, 80 ounces of water per day. You don't need to be going to the bathroom more frequently than like an hour and a half. So cut back a little bit if you are, and, and that's a tough one to talk about. I'm going to avoid talking about it anymore though. Number six, have a power foods lifestyle salad at least once per day. A PFL salad could be a PVC, PVF, or PVCF. So get your leafy greens. That's your V. You could add other V's to it, you know, like a uh, diced bell pepper, diced cucumber, uh, some chopped up broccoli is really yummy, cauliflower and so forth. Get creative. Use your power foods list. By the way, guys, if you have not gotten your power foods list yet, head over to the Facebook group, Power Foods Lifestyle Champions, and click on files. You can access it either from your phone or your desktop computer or your laptop. I'd recommend your laptop though, because unless you can print from your phone, like to your, a Wi-Fi printer or something, then it's going to be easier for you to save this freebie with the Power Foods list and some other helpful information. Uh, it'll be easier to save it to like Dropbox or Google Drive or however you keep your information. So anyhow, make sure you go get that freebie. It's five pages. Even if you have had a previous Power Foods list, go get this, this download. It's new as of fall 2019. It's just got a little bit more information pieced together uh, to keep things a little bit more simple. And it might be a good refresher for those of you who have been with me a long time. 
Back to the PFL salad, have some lean protein on there. It could be some shredded chicken. It could be some ground turkey that's prepped. It could be rotisserie chicken. You could throw on a can of tuna canned uh, chicken. Make it easy. Remember that ground beef at 85% lean is going to be a pf it's not just a p it's got the fat in their reaching peak range of 8 to 12 grams of fat so in that case you would not add a fat in addition to the the beef but if you're using a lean protein which is less than three to four grams of protein or i'm sorry three to four grams of fat for the four ounces or so of protein then you would add two ounces of avocado or maybe a tablespoon of some fatty dressing like uh, olive oil or i make my own ranch with avocado mayonnaise and that's delicious it's my favorite thing ever uh you could throw on some nuts or some seeds about in the the amount of a palm full so two tablespoons and if you wanted a carb if you wanted it to be a pvcf you could dice up some sweet potato throw it in there you could even crunch up some tortilla chips measure them out 20 to 30 grams of carbs it's usually like 10 tortilla chips you know you can kind of make a little tortilla taco salad there now those are not a strategic carb however if you eat them in peak range you can make the meal strategic if you want other strategic carbs you could do a half cup of beans half cup of cooked lentils half cup of cooked rice uh, three ounces of red potato a whole grain tortilla just again check those carb numbers 30 to 40 i'm sorry whoa 20 to 30 grams of total carbohydrates is a c or a carbohydrate Number seven, cut out the non-essential extras, things like croutons, cheese, extra dressing, and so forth. Remember, these items are not bad, but when you are striving to eat in a caloric deficit in order to lose some body fat, that's the difference is cut the excess. It's kind of like we've probably all had the experience of walking in Target or Walmart or something, and you have one, maybe two items you need to get. You go in there, and as you're walking along, you're like, oh, this little thing, it's like $3. Oh, it's so cute. It's on sale. Oh, what about this little thing? It's like $4. Oh, grab it, put it in the cart. And by the time you walk out of there, you've paid like $80 for these one or two items that you came to get that should have cost like $10 to $12. And I know we've all had that happen to us. Well, maybe not all of us. Maybe some of you have way better discipline. But that that definitely has happened. And so it's the same principle. You have to laser focus on what am I eating? What is my dietary allowance? What is my quote unquote budget here? And what am I going to do to stay in the budget? And so we cut the non-essentials. We cut the foods that aren't providing the most nutrition to us so that within a caloric deficit, we can still feel full. We can still protect our bodies, getting the right nourishment in there. You know, you don't want to eat all these, these empty calorie foods because you're A, going to deprive your body of vitamins and minerals, which after a while, you cannot sustain that because your body's going to start breaking down and feeling like garbage. Your energy is going to go out the door. Um, it's going to feel really yucky, which is why power foods lifestyle is about getting the majority of your foods to be power foods, very, very dense in vitamins and minerals, helping get quality carbohydrates, fats, and proteins into your body so that you can build your new body composition, improved body rather than slide into it with diminished health. Because yes, you can shift your body composition eating less than stellar food. You can. But you're probably going to feel like garbage and you're probably going to lose a lot of muscle, which that really isn't a good look on anyone, you know, unless you were some huge power lifter bodybuilder. Um, I won't go through my story right now of intentionally trying to lose muscle mass when I was um, getting back into the dance world from the fitness competition world, but I have done that. So I can speak to that. And uh, number eight, replace carbs with fats after 4 PM. Again, carbs are not the bad guy. Remember how I just gave you the example of banana? Well, it's, it's contained, you know, and let's, let's look at the fact that carbohydrates, generally speaking, will bring about other sugar cravings. And so be mindful of this so that you can get fats in your body. Fats release the hormone cholecystokinin, CCK, which helps your body to feel full and register fullness, satiety. So if you are used to having garlic bread or pasta at dinner and you're wondering why you crave ice cream later, hmm, let's step back and look at that. What if you were to use zucchini noodles instead, get rid of the pasta and add an avocado instead so you replace the carbs with the fats, you're still getting the same calories. It's just from a different macronutrient source which has a different role in the body. So play around with that. Use the Power Foods list that you're going to go to the, the Power Foods Lifestyle Champions Facebook group and use that list to 
brainstorm and say, you know, I'm used to eating this food. What could I replace it with? And use our Power Foods Lifestyle Champions group to ask questions about portion sizes or, hey, if I'm doing this, what could I do? I love answering those questions and, and I wish more of you would post in that group. I sometimes feel like maybe you guys worry about being wrong or saying something the wrong way. And please know I never judge ever, ever, ever. I obviously will look for opportunities to teach and to help in larger perspective. Um, but that group is a safe group. You know, it's a place to come and learn and share. And so many people learn, um, but we can't all be people who sit on the on the back row and kind of wait for everyone else to do the speaking. Sometimes it's helpful for us to be the one that grabs the mic, right? Okay, number nine, be accountable to yourself. This is our non-nutrition focus thing. Whether it's tracking your macronutrients and calories in MyFitnessPal, which is my go-to app, the one I recommend in all my courses and coaching, whether it's keeping a food journal, maybe you don't want to do the digital one. You just want to kind of be mindful and aware of what you are actually eating. I have a new form of tracking that I use with my clients as of about September 2019, and it is a mindfulness tracker. And so at each meal, they simply circle if they had their peak range of protein, vegetable, fat, and carb. We add up the power of foods they've eaten. And so it's not about numbers per se. It's more about mindfulness mindfulness of macro group and it's for the right individual it can be very powerful to still hit our macros and our calories or ballpark them uh, without feeling like we're tied to this device and some of the psychological difficulties that can come with tracking for many people tracking is freedom for others it's debilitating so it's important for you to know what's right and go about that make a little whiteboard with ways to track it get make a little sheet on google sheets or something where you can put some gold stars print it off put a three by five card on the fridge or in any of the other places that we love to have reminders um, just give yourself a place to track how you are doing so you can visibly see the progress and the momentum you are gaining 10 is add sprints three times a week to your workouts. So if you are already doing high intensity interval training, hit uh, about two to three times a week, good for you, keep it up, don't add. However, if you're just used to maybe doing no cardio, light cardio, or even long duration, like 30 to 60 minutes of jogging or elliptical or bike, and you're never really pushing your heart rate, above 60 to 65 percent of your max heart rate remember to find max heart rate take 220 minus your age that's max heart rate so take that number multiply it by 0.6 and then that's the heart rate that's kind of like your aerobic one that's not really tapping into where i want you to be going with which is the anaerobic threshold the high intensity which is going to be using glucose the more we utilize the glucose in your liver and in the muscle sites, once we burn through that, we're going straight into fat storage. Yes, aerobic activity straight burns fat storage, but at a much slower rate. It is far more efficient and effective to be dipping into that anaerobic state, if possible, if your body allows it, if you're in good health, if you don't have aches and pains that prevent you from doing that, then this would be a very good thing to do. So do a sprint of about 20, 20 seconds or so, and then 40 to 90 second rest. Uh, do that five to 10 times, three times a week. And that is very, very effective. That's all the cardio you will need to do. All right, my friends, I could share a lot more tips and tricks, but hopefully this will get you going and help you to navigate towards a, an enhanced path towards your goals. Remember that you are the one who gets to decide what you want to accomplish and you have a right to achieve any goal you want. Don't let the world tell you what's right or wrong or what you should or shouldn't be doing. If you want to do it and you want to do so healthily, mindfully, in a way that builds your health, builds your psychology, helps you feel more confident, then I'm going to support you in that goal. Be a strategist of your own body and your own health, which means you have to be self-aware. Take time to ponder, to observe your thoughts and your emotions, to make tweaks to your nutrition or your fitness or the way you think about your nutrition and fitness. Sometimes people pull the plug on a very effective plan that would work for them. It's just that their perspective wasn't coming in at the right angle. Oftentimes it's little tweaks in our mindset that can be very, very helpful. And if you're struggling with that, I'm gonna recommend you read As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. That is a book that talks about your mind being a garden and how to get rid of the weeds and help to plant the right flower seeds and let them bloom and grow. It's a fascinating book that I return to again and again for things in my own life. 
I am excited for you. I hope that the wedding is fantastic. I would love to hear your success stories. If you have any other questions, be sure to either send me a direct message on Power Foods Lifestyle Instagram or in the Facebook group Power Foods Lifestyle Champions. One final reminder, the information in this episode is provided for informational purposes and is not meant to substitute the advice provided by your own physician or medical professional.